Well, what is the event that defined your generation? The greatest generation was defined by World War II. Many either served or had family members that served. And I don't think there was a person in the country that wasn't impacted by World War II in some way. It led to a generation that respected sacrifice and service. My children were born in the mid 90s. They tell me that the defining moment for their generation was 9-11. They were six and four years old, old enough to know that something really tragic and important had happened and young enough not to really understand the magnitude. But they don't remember not living in a post 9-11 world. They have a different concept of evil than I did growing up and a cynicism that I wished that I could have protected them from. What was the defining event of your generation? Back in 1997, William Strauss and Neil Howe released a book called The Fourth Turning, An American Prophecy. It looks at the history of Anglo-American culture, and just to be clear, that this looks at our history from a white European-based culture and notes that there are cycles of 80 to 100 year generational cycles. And each of those cycles is divided into four 20 to 25 year cycles. Each cycle starts with a big crisis that leads to a climax transformation time and in the middle and then ends with another big crisis, again leading to the next cycle of transformation. So they are thinking that the turning, it's not a linear process, it's more of a uh, cycle process. So for example, the model starts with the War of the Roses in the mid 15th century, which led to the climax of the Protestant Revolution and ended with the disorienting defeat, disorienting defeat of the Spanish Armada. Or you can fast forward 300 years where the transformation came after the Revolutionary War the climax came with that trans transcendental movement and it ended with the civil war. Each of these cycles is 80 to 100 years. So within these cycles, like I said, there are four turnings defined by Strauss and Howe. The first turning is an era when institutions are strong and individualism is weak. Society feels confident about where it wants to go collectively even if it's somewhat stifled by the conformity. America's most recent first turning was post-World War II, that American high beginning in 1946 and ending with the assassination of John, John F. Kennedy in 1963. The silent generation came out of this time. Other first turnings are the post-Civil War Reconstruction era, and time just after the ratification of the constitution in the country. The second turning is a time of awakening. This is an era when institutions are attacked in the name of personal and spiritual autonomy. Just when society is reaching its high tide of public progress, people suddenly tire of that social discipline and want to recapture that sense of personal authenticity. This is a time for the activists and the spiritualists. They look at the high from the first turning and see those that were left behind or ways that it was not working for everyone. America's most recent awakening came from college campuses and inner cities during the revolts of the mid 60s up to the tax revolts of the early 80s. Examples of earlier second turnings include the time around 1900 when we had the labor protests and the suffrage movement and the transcendental movement, when, which Henry David Thoreau described as a period when we have lost the world and begin to find ourselves. That defines the second turning. The third turning is a time of unraveling. The mood in this era is in many ways the opposite of a high. Institutions are weak and distrusted while individualism is strong and flourishing. These unravelings follow the awakenings which teach the lesson that society must fall apart after they awake to a new way of thinking. 
America's most recent third turn was the era of Reaganomics and the culture wars beginning in the early 18, uh, 1980s, and probably, they say, ending in 2008. The era opened with that triumphant morning in America, individualism, and drifted towards a pervasive distrust of institutions and leaders, and the splitting of national consensus into different values camps. My generation, Generation X, came out of this time. And earlier examples of this third turning include the periods around the roaring 20s, 1920s of prohibition and the Mexican War of the, ninth, of the 1850s. They were all periods of what uh, the authors call cynicism and bad manners, when civic authority felt weak, social disorder felt pervasive, and the culture felt exhausted. So that leads us to the fourth turning, which is a crisis. This is an era in which America's institutional life is torn down and rebuilt from the ground up, always in response to a perceived threat to the nation's very survival. Civic authority in this tur turning revives, cultural expression finds a community purpose, and people begin to locate themselves as a member of a larger group. In every instance, fourth turnings have eventually become new founding moments in America's history, refreshing and redefining the national identity. Before now, America's most recent fourth turning began with the stock market crash in 1929, and it climaxed at World War II. The millennials are coming to age in this current fourth turning. Examples of pa past fourth turnings include the Civil War of the 1860s and the Revolution of the 1770s, both periods of momentous crisis when the identity of the nation hung in the balance. So if you buy into this larger context, which let's be honest, you're you, you, you may or may not, but I think it's pretty compelling. But if you buy into it, we're in the fourth turning. It kind of connects with the song, in this great turning. I don't know if they were quoting Strauss and Howe, but for me, it fits. So fourth turnings always climax with an ex existential crisis that either destroys the country or results in its renewal. Strauss and Howe say that in the fourth turning, a crisis arises in response to sudden threats that previously would have been ignored or deferred, but which are now perceived as dire. Great worldly perils boil off the clutter and complexity of life leaving behind one simple imperative. The society must prevail. This requires a solid public consensus, aggressive institutions, and personal sacrifice. So that leaves us now with where are we in the fourth turning? Are we at the climax point of it yet? Is this our civil war or revolutionary war? Scholars suggest that this current fourth turning started in 2008 with the economic recession. So is the climate crisis going to be the peak crisis of this time? What is our boil off point in that? Was it the election of Donald Trump and the extreme polarization of our country? Because honestly, interestingly, so half of the country believes that Donald Trump is the downfall of our time and half believe he's the solution. So I actually don't think this is the climax. What about the next election? Is that going to be it? Is it the pandemic and the resulting unemployment and economic impacts that I don't think that we've even begin, begun to see the beginning of? Is that what is going to bring us to our knees to envision a new social order? Is it the race revolution that I'm glad to see is continuing beyond this summer? Is that it? Can it get worse? 
are the, are we at the point where people say that we as a society must knit ourselves together to build a new future? Or does there have to be more before we get there? So this is what I find so hard and frustrating because we don't know yet. We can't predict what is coming. We can only look back later and go, oh, that's where it all changed. This is the challenge of being intelligent, analytical beings. We're knowledge knowledgeable enough to see our past cycles in our history, but we're not omniscient enough to know how our current ones will end up. And end up. Here is the thing I know though. We, we as Unitarian Universalists, we have the opportunity to lead in love through this. I don't know how it will end, but I do know that we'll be talking about this era for the rest of my life. We'll be talking about the pandemic of 2020 and hopefully not the pandemic of the early 2020s. We will be talking about the unraveling and then hopefully the rebuilding of society that is more inclusive and equitable. All of this is a cycle. And we hope that it is a cycle that continues to help us reach for our higher selves to be elevated. And I believe in the role of our liberal faith to be calling people to that higher, more equitable, radical vision. And the time to be clarifying that vision is now in this fourth turning, the recreating. We need to lead in love. Our congregation is in, in its own cycle. As Katie was talking about, we have been, have the long or relatively short arc of the congregation's history, depending on how you look at it. We will be 75 years old in 2022. I say we start planning the party now. But a congregation also has a cycle with the minister. In those terms, like Katie says, we are in a new cycle. Last year, our ministry together was a newborn. This year, we are a toddler. Last year was all about me figuring out what was going on here. It took me a few months just to figure out where all the keys went to. I got to know our leadership and more and more of all of you. We did have a construction project to finish and some financial priorities that needed immediate attention. I got to know the congregation's history as well as its dreams for the future. And you all got to know me a little bit, my personality, my management style, my sense of humor, my family. From my vantage point, and I hope it was from yours too, it was quite the honeymoon. I know that I am more glad to be your minister now than I was even one year ago. The newborn glow was there. Now, we did not have a typical first year at all. In fact, I've said that if I knew we were going to have a pandemic, I would have focused the entire first six months on just getting to know each and every one of you better. I really thought we'd have more time, but here we are in my second year of ministry with you, of us doing this ministry together. We're toddlers together. We think we know how to walk together, but there will still be missteps and falls at we, as we get used to this walking thing. We know how to do the basics, eat, drink, cry, laugh, and we're working on rounding out our knowledge of each other. I'm able to anticipate changes and make better decisions. I know not to put my hand on the stove because it's hot. But this isn't the time to start running yet. We're still learning how to walk. And the theme of last year, which was let's human together, is still very applicable. By toddlers, we're going to be venturing into new territory, and then we'll need to regroup again. And while I'm settling into seeing new exciting possibilities, the metaphor of freedom, if you will, of being able to walk. I am also keeping in mind that many of you have been walking here for far longer than I have. 
You've been walking here much longer and you know way more about how this walking goes than I do. And then of course, we need to remember that we're all toddling together online, which means that we'll need to do it even more intentionally and with great care and grace with each other. As we toddle together, let's explore the possibilities that we can do during this year. I have hopes and dreams. I hope that we can become a official welcoming congregation in the UUA's new certification program, a continuation of the welcoming that this congregation has already done to welcome our LGBTQ siblings. I have dreams that we can incorporate the Unitarian Universalist Association's Commission on Institutional Change, which is a deep look into our denomination and congregational systems to see where white supremacy culture is entrenched and to see if we can intentionally and lovingly disrupt it. I've seen and heard from you all that we have opportunities to improve our communication. You approved budget for a new website and we're finding new ways to use technology and social media to connect. And we're gonna be finding innovative ways to help welcome new members and to include them into the congregation, reinventing how to do that online. I think the one thing that 2020 has taught us is that we don't have any idea what comes next. But the concept of the turnings gives me hope because if we look at history, we will get to a point where we have the opportunity to reinvent ourselves as a society. And I have not only hope, but faith, real faith that we as Unitarian Universalists, as a congregation for our time, as our vision says, for this time, have the opportunity to lead with love and show Phoenix, the United States, the world, how to lead with love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. So might it be.